Today I'm going to show you how to enjoy winter squashes, how to shop for them, what they are, how to cut and peel them, and I'm going to show you some savory dishes that can be served as an entree. Winter squash or gourd is different from summer squash, such as zucchini. It has thicker skin and so a longer shelf life. It can last up to six months in a cool, dry place. They are high in fiber, vitamins, minerals, and low in calories. Some of these squashes need to be peeled before cooking, some don't, but remember to wash them before cutting and peeling because they will soak up the water and get soggy. I have picked six of my favorite squashes. All these squashes can be baked, broiled, cooked on the stove top, or in the microwave. Let's start with the pumpkin. This is the cooking variety called sugar pumpkin. It's different from the Halloween kind, which is dry and stringy. The hardest part about cooking a pumpkin is the cutting and peeling of it. I have found an easy way to do that. Just take a pumpkin and poke it with a fork or knife in several places and put it in the microwave on high for about three to four minutes for a two pound pumpkin. I have cooked one for you once it's cooled, the peel comes out real easily and it's partially cooked, so it cuts down the cooking time. I have prepared a tangy mashed pumpkin recipe from the blog. It has garlic and spices, and it's a classic dish served with puri in Northeastern India called kaddu puri. Kaddu is the Hindi name for pumpkin. Kabocha squash is a Japanese variety and looks very similar to pumpkin on the inside. It's a common vegetable served in tempura dishes. I love the texture of kabocha squash. It's almost like a potato or chestnut-like instead of a squash. The skin is quite thin, so you don't have to peel it. Just rinse it well before cutting. My favorite preparation is to simply roast it with spices, garlic, and balsamic vinegar. Simple and easy. Next up is acorn squash. This squash does not get the respect that it deserves. I have scooped out the seeds to show you the texture, which is not too fibrous, and it's moist and has a honey-like flavor. It can be peeled using the microwave method. I don't even peel it. The skin gets quite tender after cooking and you get the extra fiber in your diet. I have prepared the acorn squash with chana recipe from the blog. It has tomatoes, onions, garlic, and some spices, and makes a great stew for a cool winter evening. Next up is butternut squash. This is my favorite squash. As the name suggests, it has a buttery smooth texture and a rich saffron color that deepens while cooking. The best way to cut a butternut squash is to separate the belly and the neck first. So cut it here and then cut each part in half. When picking the squash, make sure that you get one which has a thick neck because this is where all the meat is. The belly part holds a cavity with the seeds in it. This squash is really easy to peel. You can peel it with a peeler. I use the squash for savory as well as sweet dishes such as pumpkin pie and kaddu halwa. I have prepared baked butternut squash with curry powder, garlic, and a touch of balsamic vinegar to balance the sweetness. You can find the recipe on the blog. This is a banana squash. This squash is quite big, about this big, so most markets cut it in pieces before selling it. The texture and taste of this squash is very similar to a pumpkin. So it can be used in any recipe that calls for a pumpkin. In fact, a lot of squash recipes are interchangeable. Last but not least is this beautiful squash called delicata squash. The texture is similar to butternut squash and the skin is very thin, so it does not have to be peeled. This does not store very well, but it's a perfect size for a small family. You can cut it in rings and pop out the seeds or cut it in half moons. I just roast it with a little bit of seasoning. It looks so beautiful in a platter. All of these recipes are available on the blog and the links are posted below the video. Please post your questions and comments and let me know how it goes.